You're looking at the heavy duty truck with the most payload, most towing, most torque, most everything. This is the 2020 Ford F-350 Super Duty. It's either stupid overkill or absolutely necessary. That all depends on what you do for work and what you consider fun. We last filmed the Super Duty when it was new for 2017, and now for 2020, it's been refreshed. But since then, we've driven lots of newer heavy duty trucks like the Ram 2500, Chevy Silverado 2500, and the GMC Sierra 2500. Now, truck buyers tend to be stereotyped into groups where they will only purchase one brand. That's not always true. So I'll tell you this right now, keep an open mind, because $84,000 can buy you quite a lot of truck. But first, do us a solid and subscribe to the Car Guru's YouTube channel. It's truck time. I'm driving the best heavy duty truck engine out there. Best in terms of raw numbers. This is the 6.7 liter Power Stroke V8 diesel. 475 horsepower, 1,050 pound feet of torque. That's just a smidge higher than what you get in a Ram 3500, because as we all know, truck marketing is a measuring contest. The capability is real. This truck with 355 rear axle and four wheel drive can tow 22,000 pounds and put 2,890 pounds in the bed. That varies by engine, cab, drivetrain. Go online and you'll scroll and scroll to see all the numbers. The best in-class numbers are on the F450 with the dual rear wheels. 37,000 pounds in tow, 7,850 pounds on the bed. Not at the same time, of course, but wow. Standard is a 6.2 liter gas V8. That's 385 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque. That gets a six-speed automatic, but new for 2020 is a 7.3 liter V8. So you get two gas V8 engines. Same horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque, and it's hooked up to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Now, why the two V8s? Well, Ford builds the 7.3 liter as a more robust and reliable engine. It's using a cast iron block, so it's not aluminum. Push rods instead of dual overhead cams. It's got port injection as opposed to direct injection. Ford steel crankshaft. All of these older tried and true technologies that are supposed to last longer over the long term. So for gas V8, that might be the one you want. Now the diesel, it's a master of smoothness. It really is. It's got all the pulling power you'd expect because Anything with over a thousand pound-feet of torque should be pulling things no problem. But this V8, it doesn't rattle. It's not shaking the cab when I start it. There's no delivery truck clatter like you'll hear on like Jeep diesels, for example. It's pretty refined in here, which is kind of surprising. And maybe it shouldn't be because this is a $10,000 option to get the diesel engine. A lot of that is, of course, for the emissions equipment to get it all clean. But if you want the diesel, this is something that you really have to want and pay for. Every Super Duty trim comes with either rear or the optional four-wheel drive. It's an electronic shift on the fly system with an optional rear locking diff for those really hairy situations when you're stuck. And of course, a solid front axle. That's the major difference right there between the F-150 and all the Super Duties. You get all that extra toughness and weight on the vehicle. Another diesel extra is the exhaust brake. If you hit a button here on the dash, it'll help save the real brakes. Pop this in the manual. So you don't roast them when you're going downhill with the trailer. And the amount of engine braking really is impressive. Wow, second gear, we're in a pretty good grade right now and we are still decelerating. Foot not even on the brake. Pop that back into neutral. It can automatically come on or you can hit it manually with that switch, but it is a lifesaver, believe me. So even though I'm driving the Platinum trim, which is fitted with so many nice luxuries like massaging seats, the panoramic moonroof, double pane glass, it feels like a Lincoln in here, it's still a Super Duty and that means the ride is stiff, as it should be. It's designed to carry lots of loads, 60 pounds of pressure on the tires when cold in the front, 80 in the rear. But still, despite all that, it's not 
the most jarring, uncomfortable experience you would expect. It's, it's not great, but it's not bad at all. Also, the steering is surprising because it actually has some on-center feel. That's something I didn't feel in the Ram 2500. Ford actually has a pretty uh, sophisticated system here. It's a combination hydraulic and electric assist and optional variable gear ratios. So that means that when you're at, say, lower speeds in parking lots, you won't have to turn the wheel as much. It makes the F350 and 250, 450, any of them, more maneuverable. So that's a nice feature. It's still giant. I know some of you will say, why aren't I hauling a 20,000 pound trailer? How come he doesn't have horses in the back right now or a, or a 40 foot sailboat? Well, I'm sorry folks, I don't have that. I was just helping out some friends uh, move their house. They're going to Denver. I put a grill in the back. I was moving lumber from my parents' house from the clearing a storm that we had in the Northeast not too long ago. So it handles those things pretty well too. And when you have weights like that, you barely even feel them in a truck like this. That should give you an idea of how much capability the Super Duty has. Fuel economy is actually impressive for a vehicle this big. This is an 8,000 pound or so brick going through the wind and I've been getting almost 18 miles to the gallon as indicated here on the dash. The EPA does not rate them, they test them. They will not publish a rating for vehicles that are over 8,500 uh, GVWR. So you're not gonna find those ratings, but I think it's pretty good. Plus 48 gallons of fuel in my tank, which means I'm not going to be running out anytime soon. On the Super Duty, there's a different grill for each of the six trims. In 2020, you won't really see much of a change. The headlight cutout is a little different. The taillights are slightly restyled. There's a little bit new style to these wheels. Otherwise, it's pretty much identical. So I'm in the back right now, what looks like a nice flat loading floor, but there's actually a box. A nice box that collapses and becomes really stiff and strong. It's got a nice divider, it's nice and wide. Lock that baby in place, put the cushion down, and I can use a separate key to lock this cushion so no one can get your stuff inside. The biggest difference between a Super Duty and an F-150 is the fact that you can combine the full-size cab with the full-size bed. This is a crew cab, full four doors with a full size eight foot bed. Otherwise it comes with a six and three quarter foot long bed, neither the regular super cab or the full crew cab. These mirrors are kind of magical all by themselves. They got so many lights, clearance, markers, puddles, cameras here, power extending and power folding. Wow. Another nice luxury touch on the platinum trim Power release tailgate, nice stamped action, key fob or from the button inside the cab. And the F-Series has this handy fold down step. Yes, it's a little more complex than the integrated bumper step on the GM models, but watch. Whoa, super easy. I'm standing now on the gooseneck and fifth wheel towing connection. That gives you, of course, maximum capacity. Power connections for that right here, tie down hooks, and a really good spray-in bed liner. So tell us truck buyers, do you like the spray-in or would you do the drop-in? I'm seeing the spray-in everywhere. I think it's more durable, but you tell us. I would go with this one. On the Platinum, there are these pretty two-tone contoured seats with massage settings on both the seat back and the cushion. There's a top stitch dash and soft materials, this nice aluminum trim, and all these big knobs and easy to find switches for anything important. There's huge room back here with heated seats, USB ports, and this massive glass roof. It's so comfortable. Some things aren't as great, like this eight inch touchscreen or the convex mirrors that require manual adjustment. Remember, this truck costs $84,000. But the instrument panel is perfect. This optional large screen duplicates many functions and provides even more. For example, you can swap one of the auxiliary gauges like this turbo boost gauge for the transmission oil temperature gauge. My view lets you save views from multiple menus in one place, so it's really easy to have everything there. And there's a really handy trailer setup and a full checklist to make sure that you've connected everything, wired it up, and you can even change the blind spot monitoring system to adapt for that long trailer. 
All that setup is important because you can calibrate the Super Duty to steer your trailer while you're driving in reverse. I can't show you that right now, but you will need a tape measure and these. These are stickers you put on the trailer so the system knows exactly where it is. Find out more at cargurus.com. Sync 3 is also good infotainment. It's fast and intuitive. You can set a do not disturb for your phone. You can run apps on your smartphone without installing some clunky Ford app, like WebEx. On second thought, I've been in too many remote meetings lately. How about you? Anything better and you'll have to wait for the 2021 F-150 with Sync 4. Keep your eye out, we'll have a review soon. The 2020 Ford Super Duty starts at $34,000 for the F-250, $35,500 for the F-350, and $50,000 for the F-450, which is dual rear wheel. Prices are insane, yeah, but so is every heavy duty pickup. My F-350 Platinum Crew Cab 4x4 with the eight foot bed and diesel engine costs $84,285 with destination. The Platinum has a lot of luxury features you don't need, but then again, who really needs this truck? Anything more, and you'll need a commercial driver's license. GM and Ram owners, I hope you've at least considered the Ford Super Duty. And Ford fans, I know you already got this on order. This is an incredible work machine with a level of engineering I'll never appreciate, but for my money, I prefer the Ram over the Super Duty or the Silverado. That truck just feels like a Mercedes inside. But raw numbers? Nothing beats a Super Duty. For the full review, check out cargurus.com and subscribe to the Cargurus YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.